what I like to start with for the show is just kind of a summary for what is going on in the stock market for the week. And this has been a very, very interesting week. And so let me share my screen here and uh, I'll go through it with you. So what's important about this week is really what just happened this morning. Uh, and this is the jobs report that came out. So this report for last month for August and is saying there's 235,000 new jobs created in August. Okay. Uh, well, that's a bit of an issue because there was 720,000 jobs expected to be uh, created. And so that's a really big miss. Uh, and there's a couple of things that I think are interesting about this. Number one is that uh, normally when there's a big miss like this, that means the economy is kind of falling apart. Uh, you know, there's not enough jobs being created and the economy is heading in a downward direction. That's not true right now, and I'll show you why. This is a different time period. And number two, it actually is a very, very important number for the way the Federal Reserve is going to look at this. And again, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But one thing that also did happen, uh, interestingly enough, is that unemployment actually dropped. So even though there weren't tremendous number of jobs created, the number of under, under uh, unemployed dropped down to 5.2%. You can see it was all the way up to near 15% here at the at worst part of the pandemic. Uh, and if you look here back in 2019, uh, it was around 3.2%. So we're not too far away from what they would consider kind of full employment as far as that goes. But um, let me show you some surprising things. Only 235,000 jobs were created. Um, but <laughs> there's a lot of job openings. And so this shows the number of job openings uh, going back to 2000. You can see it drops during recessions, dropped here obviously during you know the close, the, the shutdown that we had during pandemic. But look at this, this is a record. We have almost uh, a little over 10 million open jobs. That's the most open jobs. And so why are we only creating 235,000 jobs? It's because people aren't taking the jobs. Uh, and so there's a variety of reasons for that and what have you. But companies are having to kind of go out of their way to find people. And I found this, this particular sign here. It's really fascinating. Now hiring. This is McDonald's in Medford, Oregon. 14 and 15-year-olds are welcome, essentially. And so this is what's happening is not that the economy is growing slowly and not create jobs. It's that people aren't taking the jobs that are available. So they're starting to try different things. They're moving down in age and taking on younger people and trying to kind of expand the pool of people that they might uh, be able to hire. Uh, and so that, that's been very, very fascinating. Uh, and then one of the things that's also interesting here to me is just what is full employment? Right. So full employment, if you thought about it just in a common sense way, it'd be everybody's working. Well, that hasn't really ever happened. If you look back, here's the employment level, you know, going back to 1950s and you can see it never went to zero. And a matter of fact, if you look from the 1970s to now, about six million people unemployed is as low as it gets. And we saw that here. We saw it here, you know, just before 2000. We saw it here in 2019. Um, so there's about 9 million people unemployed right now and 6 million people that, you know, maybe would stay unemployed uh, historically. And so we, we have some people left that could go get a job, uh, but it is shrinking down. Uh, and so that is one of the things that's important. Uh, and so one of the ways that they're trying to, you know, attract people out of that uh, pool to come to work uh, is to you know go down in age. The second thing is to pay more. And so this shows the average hourly pay uh, wage. Uh, and so you can see here it was about 3.6% growth over a 12 month basis in 2019. We had some very unusual spikes during the during the pandemic. You can kind of ignore those, uh, but we're back to 4.3% right now. So it's a little bit higher growth in wages than what we saw, for example, in 2019. And so this is one of the components that the market is going to look at. So there's two pieces here that are very fascinating. One, when you can't get everybody to come out to work, that could be inflationary. But at the same time, when there are less people coming out to work, the Federal Reserve might stay with their stimulus plans and keep rates lower longer. So very, these are two competing forces. So if we look here at the inflationary uh, situation, you can see here that the 10-year treasury, okay, which is a great measure for what's kind of happening, 
with inflation. This is the yield. So what you get essentially out of that. And you can see that the yield skyrocketed in February, March and, and, and what have you. At that time, the vaccine is rolling out. Uh, people are expecting, you know, a reopening to happen very quickly. And for a variety of reasons, it didn't really happen as quick as everybody thought. You know, for one thing, we just didn't have enough semiconductors. We couldn't get enough people to come out of their homes to come back to work uh, and all of these different issues. And now, of course, we have this Delta variant. However, we are now seeing a reestablishment of the increase of the yield in the 10-year treasury. And so what there's a couple things that that means. Number one, it means that the, that the bond market might be looking forward and saying that the economy is still going to grow, which is good. Uh, we like to see that. Number two is that there might be some inflationary pressure because of that. And that has a lot to do with what we saw today in today's labor uh, report. And so, again, this is not normal. You know, normally we don't even pay attention to the labor report, uh, to be honest, uh, because it's such a lagging indicator. The people that were just hired in August, those jobs were created a long time ago. Uh, it just takes a long time for people to get through the whole process to finally get hired. Uh, and but. Right now, it is very, very important to what's happening in the market because of the possible inflationary pressure, how much more are we having to pay to get people to come out, and because the Federal Reserve has very specifically said that they're looking at employment. Uh, as a measure as to when they're going to start to increase rates and cut back on their bond purchases. So it's really critical right now to focus on these areas. Uh, one little quick sidelight here. As you're looking at this, I get asked all the time about refinancing. And so, uh, you know, if you look at the 10-year treasury, it has a fairly direct relationship to the mortgage rates uh, in, in over a period of time. And so uh, now it's coming back up. Again, if you were going to refinance, if you haven't already, uh, uh, it, it might be a good time to do that. So, but let's take a look at what's been happening to the, to the market here in the short term and the long term, uh, especially as it's been dealing with this labor issue as far as that goes. So this this particular chart is the S&P 500 for the last five days. Each one of these little bars is a 10 minute increment. So you can see on Monday, big jump. Tuesday morning, big jump. But since then, we've basically gone sideways, right? And the reason we've gone sideways is because it was waiting for this jobs report. This, it's very important. To, uh, it makes a difference as to what the Federal Reserve might do here. Uh, but I will say, if you look at today, uh, we're actually up a little bit uh, as this sits, and we're seeing you know, a decent motion. Again, normally, if you have a big miss on the jobs report, the market would be down because it's afraid of you know, what might be happening to the economy, sort of a confirmation of what, what we've been seeing. So, and that's not the case here. The market's actually up because a low jobs report allows the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates lower longer uh, and allows the Federal Reserve to keep uh, going with, you know, the bond purchase. Now, I will say that uh, August report isn't nearly as important as the September report is going to be, mainly because in August you still had kids at home, so a lot of people didn't come back to work because they had to take care of the kids. You also had a Delta variant that was going up, and you had, a, a, a in some cases, a $300 extra per week benefit that is now expiring in September. So, you know, outside of the Delta variant, which is still here, the other two issues with kids and the uh, bonus uh, for the unemployment are maybe gonna be mitigated with schools reopening and what have you too. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a lot more people that come back into the workforce next month. And the Federal Reserve has said as much. They've said that they're gonna focus on September and see what happens there. And then maybe make some announcements, more concrete announcements in November at their November meetings as to what they're going to do. But just lastly, this has just resulted in this unbelievable market. This is a very unusual 12-month uh, chart here. You know, first of all, this is the, you know, each one of these bars now is a day. This is the last 12, uh, two years, sorry. And so you can see, you know, what's been happening here uh, is that we had this, you know, giant downturn, obviously, and this amazing recovery. But we, the last time we've had any type of bigger downturn is really the September, October timeframe. Uh, and since the end of October here, uh, this 
each one of these bars here is, is a trading day. There's 210 trading days that we have gone without at least a 5% downturn. Uh, very, very smooth upward movement. There's only seven other times that have had more trading days in a row without a 5% downturn, and we're still going, uh, and it's still happening. This blue line here is the 200-day moving average, and you can just see it's very smooth, and things are going really, really well as far as that goes. So really, really... a unbelievable time frame and to me this is a uh, fascinating how this is all going to work out you know what really happens uh and and what happens along those lines but what has happened for the stock market is that it's been allowed to kind of stay in this zone you know the job growth isn't too high it isn't too low the the inflation is a possibility and it might still be a possibility but it's not really happening yet and and, and the federal reserve is has some room to kind of stay where they are so uh, really really interesting time frame so i look forward to kind of talking to you again next week about that for the summary and, and we'll see what happens then